Hey everybody, this is David. I'd like to introduce you to Evil Twin Stereo 3D, a new script for stereoscopic 3D compositing in After Effects. Working with Stereo 3D footage can be frustrating since the effect comes from the subtle difference between two 2D images. You need to work directly with the differences that are already baked in. And this has left many a compositor in an endless cycle of duplicating, copying, pasting, and shifting every time they make a change to their comp. Evil Twin was designed with the idea that you should be able to work freely using your familiar bag of tricks so you can focus on the visuals and not get caught on the stereo 3D. It provides a deep level workflow and tools to help you generate the right composition entirely from the work you've done on the left. This makes S3D editing as quick and simple as possible. For the rest of this video, I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's get started. Install Evil Twin by placing the file Evil Twin Stereo S3D.jsxbin inside the Script UI Panels folder, which is found inside the Scripts folder of the After Effects Application folder. When you restart After Effects, the Evil Twin Tool Panel will be available through the Windows menu. Drag and dock the panel anywhere in the user interface. Keep it handy since you'll be reaching for it often during intensive stereo 3D editing. Before you start, it's a good idea to look at the Help and Settings window by clicking the question mark. Here you can find detailed information about how the script works, including the functions of each button, extra commands, workflow guidelines, and a few important rules on how to name and organize your files for best results. At the bottom of the Evil Twinfo panel, you can find the current settings for the script. The important ones for getting started are the channel IDs indicated here. Channel IDs are used in naming your items to tell the script whether it's a left or right. You can change your settings, including the channel ID, by pushing the edit button to access the settings window. We'll keep these settings for now. To begin building a stereoscopic 3D comp, import a pair of left and right stereoscopic 3D footage. Check the names of your footage to make sure they match the channel IDs in the settings panel. Edit the names if necessary. Always keep your stereoscopic pairs in the same folder of the project panel. Create the left comp manually using only your left footage. It's a good idea to keep your comps and footage organized by folder. You can rename the comp. Just make sure it still has the left channel ID, underscore L in this case. To build the right comp that goes with this left, click LR clone. LR Clone is the main tool to create the right comp at any time using the left. When we pressed LR Clone, three important things happened. One, the right comp was added to the project panel. Two, new layers were added to the left comp. Evil Twin Right is the right comp nested inside of the left comp. Evil Twin S3D is an adjustment layer that helps us compare the left, everything below it, with the right, the layer right above. Together, they allow us to view the comp in anaglyph stereoscopic 3D without ever leaving the left comp. And this makes it easy to see the third important thing. When you use the LR clone, the right comp is created and replaces any left footage with right footage. You can check this by opening the right comp, which is directly available through the Evil Twin right layer. Notice that the layer names remain unchanged from their left comp counterparts. But when we view the source of the layer, we can see that it's been swapped with its stereoscopic twin, regardless of whichever one you started with. Evil Twin Right and Evil Twin S3D work closely with the Wiggle button. Click Wiggle to quickly flip back and forth between left and right. Option or Alt-click Wiggle to instantly activate Anaglyph 3D. While viewing in Anaglyph 3D, you can grab the Evil Twin right layer and slide it left or right to choose the best convergence for your current area of interest and zoom level. We call this on-the-fly convergence, since you keep changing it as you go, based on your viewing needs at the moment. On-the-fly convergence is a great way to look at your work in stereoscopic 3D and adapt it to your changing situation. However, on-the-fly convergence only exists in the left comp, and it won't be used if you nest your comp in a higher one or in the final render. If you need to add a formal convergence to your scene that will be rendered into the right eye, use Scene Convergence. Push the Con button to add a Scene Convergence layer. Use the R Offset slider to control and keyframe your convergence exactly as you'd like it in your final version. 
to ensure you're looking at the scene convergence as it will be rendered, and not the combined effect with on-the-fly convergence, reset the position of the Evil Twin right layer. Remember that the scene convergence layer is a special layer that will be moved to the top of the left part of your comp every time the LR clone is run, as well as many of the other functions. Keep adding changes to your left comp using After Effects tools and techniques that you're already familiar with, and compare with the right comp whenever you want using Wiggle or Anaglyph. Every change you make in the left comp is added to the right comp when you push LR clone. But you can also create a live link between properties on the left and their stereoscopic counterpart on the right. Just select your property and push the X button. This will add an evil twin magic expression to your property. Magic expressions sit quietly in the left side, but when they're cloned over to the right side, they actively seek a connection to the original left. This allows you to control both the left and right values in real time, all from within the left comp. This eliminates the need to push LR clone every time you make a change to that effect, which is extremely useful and time-saving when you're editing in 3D. Click the X plus button to add Magic Expression Plus. Magic Expression Plus is identical to Magic Expression, except it adds a new slider labeled R Offset to your effects group. The value of the R Offset slider is applied as a horizontal shift to the value on the right. This makes it extremely easy to set the stereoscopic depth of any element, especially while viewing in stereoscopic 3D. In this example, I've used Magic Expression Plus on the position property of this mask layer in order to set the stereoscopic depth. Wherever the left goes, the right goes too, plus the offset. For both types of Magic Expression, you can multiple select properties to add the expression. Once you hit LR Clone, the expression is copied to the right side, and your effects and properties are live linked. To create a mask that allows you to work in 2D and then quickly fit it stereoscopically to any 3D plane, like this basketball court, use an S3D mat by selecting the layer you want to mask out and pushing the mat button. Draw your masks into the new S3D mat layer that was just added to your comp. Click LR clone to update your changes to the right and put the comp in Anaglyph 3D by alt-clicking the wiggle button. The custom effects in the S3D mat layer will leave the left masks untouched, while distorting the right in a precise way to create a stereoscopic rotation. Activate the S3D corner pin effect, and choose a pivot for your S3D rotation using the S3D anchor. Now you're ready to use the X and Y tilt sliders to find the exact plane that you want your mask to sit in. Use the R offset position slider to adjust the stereoscopic depth of the S3D anchor. Remember, in most cases where you're masking over footage, you'll need to use an S3D mat, since it's rare that the subject that you're matting will be in a perfectly straight plane. Magic expressions are a robust and fast way to live link your left and right values and add S3D offsets. But sometimes you need your left and right effects or masks to be completely independent of each other. For example, this mask can't be properly fit to the stereoscopic footage using our offset sliders and tilts alone. To create a true contour of the volume of this player's body, we need two separate masks that we can edit independently. However, we want to do this in a way that will still work with LR clone. In this case, use Split FX. Split FX turns your effect or mask into a small system of three versions that are linked by expressions. The left version contains your properties and values for the left comp. The right version will be used in the right comp. Any property in the right version that's not spatial is connected directly to the same property in the left version. Meanwhile, spatial properties are left completely independent. Both the left and right version should stay disabled, or in the case of a mask, set to none. They're there to serve as a reference for the split FX version, which takes its values from the left or right depending on which comp it's in. We'll use the split FX system to create a volumetric mask for this basketball player. Notice that the mask label colors make it possible to look at the mask paths directly in Anaglyph 3D. To begin shaping your mask in stereoscopic 3D, first lock the left mask. Then select the entire right mask 
and shift it horizontally with your left and right arrow keys in order to set the approximate stereoscopic 3D depth of the right mask. From then on, refine the mask by selecting specific points and shifting them left or right with your arrow keys. If the masks themselves are getting in the way, select your mask points and turn off the mask visibility using this button. You'll still be able to shift left and right using the arrow keys. Use the left version to control non-spatial properties like mask feather and mask expansion. The right will follow automatically. Here we've used the split FX function to create a stereoscopic 3D mask that follows the complex contour of this basketball player. We were able to keep everything within the left comp, which makes it easy to keep working with LR Clone, Wiggle, and Anaglyph 3D. Note that Split FX offers less automation than Magic Expressions. If you keyframe the left mask over time, the right mask won't know, and you'll need to readjust all the keyframes of the right. For this reason, it's recommended that you do most of your keyframing first, and then add Split FX. Don't forget, Split FX is not just for masks. Use it on any effect where you need independent left and right versions that are not connected to each other. In addition to on-the-fly stereoscopic viewing, you can create a dedicated S3D viewer comp for live output to a 3D display, or quick rendering to one of three stereoscopic formats. Select the left comp, and then click the SVU button to instantly create the stereoscopic 3D viewer comp. The comp will be created using the dimensions set in the Evil Twin settings panel. These dimensions should match the resolution of your 3D display. They can be easily changed later as well. Everything you need can be found within the S3D settings layer. Set the S3D mode to 1 for anaglyph, 2 for over under, or 3 for side by side. Use the Convergence slider to set the stereoscopic convergence for this comp. The S3D Viewer comp takes extra care to avoid edge conflicts as a result of converging. You can fine-tune the modified edges using left and right edge depth. Use the Switch LR checkbox to swap the positions of your left and right layers. If you move and scale the S3D settings layer, your stereoscopic content will follow. The new position and scale will be visible regardless of the chosen S3D mode. The S3D Viewer Comp is a great way to integrate any 3D display into the Evil Twin workflow. To set it up on an external monitor, first undock the Composition panel so that it's a floating window. Make sure the Composition panel is locked to the S3D Viewer Comp. Set the magnification to 100%. Drag the window to the part of your desktop dedicated to the 3D display. Press Command backslash two times to put the composition into full screen view. Make sure you've chosen an S3D mode that's supported by your 3D display, and change the settings of your S3D display to enter 3D viewing. Now you can look at your comp in full color stereoscopic 3D, and it will update in real time as you work on your left comp and click LR Clone. There are many situations where you might want a layer to only appear in one eye or use the same source in both eyes as if it were not a part of a stereoscopic pair. You can change how Evil Twin handles a layer by using special tags in the layer's comments. To hide the layer in one eye and show it in the other, type Evil Wink into the layer's comment field. Evil Wink simply inverts the visibility of the layer. If it's enabled on the left, it will be disabled on the right, and vice versa. If you need to use the same source in both the left and right comp, type no evil into the layer comments. Evil Twin will then pretend that the layer has no stereoscopic pair and use the same source on both sides. Using evil wink and no evil in the layer comments will give you the flexibility to build comps that can be used with LR Clone under almost any circumstance. However, in the rare case where you need the left and right comps to be entirely independent of each other, yet still behaving as stereoscopic when nested, you can lock the entire comp from LR Clone by typing no evil in the composition comment field. This will prevent Evil Twin from overwriting the right comp with the left. There's one other exception you can add by using layer comments. Notice this timecode layer that I've placed above the entire stereo comp. I want it to act as a simple overlay for reference only. 
but when I push LR clone, the layer moves below the Evil Twin S3D layer. I can keep this layer at the top of the comp by typing evil up in the layer comment. The next time I push LR clone, it will be set to a guide layer and kept at the very top, outside of the S3D viewing system. Use evil up for any reference or guide layer that you want to keep at the top of your comp. When working with complex projects with many nested comps, you can use LR deep clone to update all the comps used directly or indirectly in the selected comp. All the comps involved will be updated in the same way as if you had pressed LR clone on each of them. Comps with the no evil tag will be skipped, so make sure you've indicated it properly for any comp you want to protect. LR deep clone is very useful as a first step when beginning the conversion of a large project to stereo 3D, and also before final rendering to make sure all your comps are up to date. It's a quick way to be sure your project is built properly with Evil Twin. I hope this overview has helped you as you get started with Evil Twin Stereo 3D. Remember that it's designed to work with whatever 2D compositing techniques you already know and love. I highly recommend creating a test project using stereoscopic footage and masks so you can fearlessly try out all the different functions to fully understand them. As you gain more practice and get comfortable with the workflow, you'll see that this method can accommodate just about any situation that involves S3D footage or rendered artwork. Stay tuned for more specialized tutorials, and please take a look at the Evil Twin quick reference included with the download. That's all for now, and I hope Evil Twin works magic for you.